Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and I did some research on YouTube videos. I do this every now and then. I just randomly select topics and go through and uh, see if it gives me some ideas for different techniques I can try. And so I've created a list of about 12 different things here that I want to try from this binge watching of YouTube. And these are all background techniques that I think might be uh, usable for art journaling pages and things like that. And so I'm going to create a series of videos, at least that's my plan right now, uh, showing me actually trying these out for myself. Now, none of these um, techniques are unique to me. As I said, I found them on YouTube. Um, there might be some variations that I'll experiment with that I have thought of while I watched those YouTube videos. And we'll see what happens. Some of them may work out, some of them may not. But what the heck, let's give it a shot. So this is very experimental. So the first background technique involves a napkin and some plastic wrap and some cardstock. And the idea here is to fuse the napkin to the cardstock to make it a little bit um, stronger. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, when you take napkins and use them as backgrounds on art journal pages and you try to stick them down with something like uh, matte medium, they all wrinkle up, they'll tear very easily, um, and it's kind of messy to work with them too, especially on really fine or sheer uh, napkins. So I'm thinking if I can fuse it to a piece of cardstock, then I can use it as a background. I can tear it um, and use pieces of it, and I won't get wrinkles and that kind of thing. Now the way this process works is you take a napkin, and of course napkins are usually two or three ply, so you pull all the uh, layers off the napkin and that's what I've done here so you can see this is fairly sheer and I just got a piece of one piece of cardstock I just cut it down to a 4 by 6 just for uh, the demonstration purposes here and I've got some plastic wrap and then what they've done is well first of all you need an iron for this too so I've got my iron sitting here off to the side it's heating up and I'm not sure what setting to put it at. I'm mat melting plastic wrap, and I don't think it'll take a lot of heat for that. So I have put it at uh, the cotton setting. Um, you don't want to use steam, they said. That makes sense. So they laid their cardstock down, and this is a uh, small little pressing mat. Very handy to have something like this. I don't have to get out an ironing board, but you could. Also, I, I have an iron that's dedicated to craft work, so I think that's the best. You can just buy a cheap iron, or if you've got an old one laying around, that'll probably work too. So I'm cutting off a piece of the plastic wrap here, and I'm just laying it down. And I put the napkin down on top of that, and I've cut the napkin a little bigger than my card so I can trim it later. Now, I have a lot of extra paper laying here. So I think the best thing to do to protect my surface is to take a sheet of probably newsprint or a large piece of paper and put it down on top of this because I don't want this plastic um, melting. I, I just thought of something here. I think to be on the safe side, I think I should cover my mat as well with a piece of newsprint. So let me go get a couple of pieces of newsprint and be right back. Okay, so I've laid a piece of newsprint down on top of my um, pressing board. I've got my cardstock, and then on top of that, I've got my plastic wrap, and then on top of that, I've got my napkin. And now I'm going to put another piece of newsprint over top of all of this, just to protect my iron from getting any plastic on it and everything else. As I said, my iron is set at cotton setting, no, no steam. And then just press. And I don't think you have to really push down too hard. And this plastic wrap I'm using is very cheap. It came from the dollar store. But basically, I guess what you're doing is you're making the plastic wrap into your adhesive. So I'm not sure how long you need to do this for. Okay, let's pick it up and see what we've got here. And we've got nothing. Nope, it didn't. It didn't stick at all. 
so maybe I do have to put more force onto it. We'll see. Okay, let's see what happened here. I'm definitely doing something wrong. Because but this is interesting. It didn't stick to the card. It stuck to the napkin. But it didn't stick to the card. So now why is that? What have I done? Well, no, it didn't stick to the napkin either. So essentially, this did not melt. Hmm. Is my iron not hot enough? I would have thought it was hot enough. Okay. Hmm. All right. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a little more research. Okay. I just reviewed the video, and I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. So I'm thinking that maybe my iron wasn't hot enough, so I put that up to the highest temperature and just let it sit here until it gets up to temperature with that. And I just tested the iron and it's hot. And I've got the plastic wrap down again on top of the card. I've got the napkin sitting here. Now I'm going to put the cover sheet back on. Now I'm thinking maybe because this cover sheet is on here, there's it's taking it longer to melt. So we're going to see. I'm just going to hold it onto this and see if I can get it to melt. This is pretty hot. I'm holding it. I'm putting some pressure on it. sure if this is going to work or not. I've got another idea I can try. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, smoke. Uh-oh. Okay, let's see here. It's pretty hot. Plastic wrap is not melting. Okay, well, it sort of melted up there. But I'm thinking maybe going through this is a little bit much. So, and I don't want to do that because I don't want to um, get this stuck to my, you know, to my iron. So maybe I need something a little lighter that the heat can go through. I mean, it'd be a real pain in the butt to try and cut this plastic wrap off all the way around here right at this stage. So I'm going to look for maybe a, a, maybe a piece of deli paper. Maybe that's a little thinner. I'll try that. At least with the deli paper, I can see through it to where my napkin actually is. Now I'm starting to think, uh, well, maybe this is not worth the effort. Well, we'll see. As you can see, I'm leaving it here for quite a while. And I'm just sort of inching my way over. See what we got this time. I'm 
No. I mean, it's got to cool. I mean, that's it. Okay. Let's just press it some more. I mean, I've got my iron up to the highest setting. Peel up. Okay, I'm just going to let it have a second or two here to cool off. It's still pretty hot. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video for a minute or two here um, until this cools down. Okay, I've let this sit for about a minute or so just to cool down. Still a little warm, but it's not as hot. And we'll see what happened here. Hmm. Well, no, I'm still not impressed. Look. plastic wrap adhered to the napkin. It just won't stick to the card. So, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I wonder if it has anything to do with the plastic wrap. Maybe I should get another piece of plastic wrap, a different type, and try it. This was the stuff I said that came from the dollar store that was really cheap. Um, maybe I'll go upstairs and get my better stuff and see if that makes a difference. Okay, I went up and got me got some of my regular plastic wrap. This stuff is the more expensive stuff. And we'll see if that makes a difference. So get my uh, cover page here and try it again. This is a new napkin. And I've still got my iron on at the highest setting. Really, I could get this napkin glued down to an art journal page with Matt Medium a lot quicker than this is taking me to do. But I guess the trade-off, if this works, is the fact that um, you won't have any wrinkles in your napkin. Because you will get wrinkles when you try to do it with the Matt Medium, no matter how um, careful you are. Okay, just another few seconds on here. I thought this was going to be a quick demo. No such thing, I guess. Okay. Now, let's just let this have a few seconds to cool down. It's pretty hot. So I don't think that... Uh, maybe... The, I don't know, maybe the plastic wrap people are using has a lower melting temperature, but they didn't name any kind of particular brand or anything. It's still really hot. Like, so, yeah, I can't get it any hotter than this. Just while this is cooling down, I was thinking in my mind, you know, I have a heat laminator and 
If you've seen some of my past videos, you know I use my heat laminator for all kinds of things besides laminating. And I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if it would be hot enough if I did the same sandwich idea and put it through my heat laminator. Of course, it would be in a, the cardboard uh, traveler because I don't want to get plastic on my rollers. And whether that would transfer this as well. But, I mean, I don't think it gets as hot as this iron. So, if this iron won't melt the stuff, then I really can't see um, the laminator doing it. Okay. Well, it's stuck to the deli paper. Okay, let's see. Well, it's sort of stuck. Yeah, it just didn't stick in this one corner. Down here. Okay. So it has stuck. So we'll see. I'm going to trim this all down to get rid of the excess, and then I'm going to run the iron over the top of it again. Okay, so I trimmed off the excess plastic wrap all the way around here. I still have some of the... Uh, um, napkin overhanging my cardstock here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it with the iron again. And this time I'm not using a cover sheet because I don't have the worry of the plastic wrap um, sticking to my iron. Yeah, this is hot. No two ways about it. Okay. Have a second or two here to cool down a little bit. I have a lot of noises happening in the background today. It's my other computer. I don't know what it's doing. I had a lot of computer problems this weekend. It looks like I still have them. Okay. That one corner wants to lift up. Still kind of warm. Well, that corner stuck down pretty good. That one's lifting up a little bit. This one's definitely, so there's something missing here. I don't know. Okay, I'm really giving it a lot of heat on that corner. cool down. The reason I'm letting it cool down, besides the fact I don't want to burn my fingers, is I'm thinking, okay, as it cools down, then uh, you're basically turning the plastic into an adhesive. It'll, um, you know, be stuck better. Okay. Let's see if that corner is stuck. Oh, yes, that corner is now stuck. Now this corner is lifting a little bit. That corner is lifting, but that corner is not. Okay. Let's do the corners. Is that the corner that was lifting? Yeah. Okay. I didn't really expect this process to take this long. Like I said, maybe my iron, it's at maximum, isn't uh, hot enough. I don't know. Or this plastic wrap I've got for some reason has a high melting point. But it is very smooth. So, okay, I'm really getting tired of all of my devices making little tinging noises. Guess I'm not showing them enough attention right now. Okay, just a few seconds more. Let's see how this is working. How are my corners? That one's good. That one's not so good. That one's okay. Now, I guess that's the best I can do Well, I, when I trim it. Okay, so like these edges are stuck on here pretty good. It's just the corners that seem to be a problem. 
It doesn't look like there's much plastic wrap there. Okay, well that you could probably fix up with a little glue. All right, I'm going to take this and trim it down. Okay, I trimmed the card down a little bit, and when I did that, those little parts that were coming up on the corners are no longer coming up because I got rid of that part. So I think a tip here would be to cut your card a little bit larger than what it what the final piece is going to be when you use it. So if you're using this like a panel on the front of a card, then um, make it, you know, what a panel, I usually make my panels about four by, let's see, it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So usually I make them about five and a quarter by four. So I have about an eighth of an inch around. Uh, so I just make sure that my card is a little bigger than that. So I've got room to trim it and that'll get rid of the corner curling up problem. Why it does that, I don't know, but it's on there really good now. But you saw what I went through to get it that good. Well, maybe I didn't need to do it that long. Maybe now with the idea that if I cut the piece a little bigger, I won't have that problem with the corners. But it looks pretty good. It feels pretty good too. It feels like paper, actually. So now you've got that. So you can use that on front of a card panel. You could probably you could put that in an art journal. And I'm wondering when you, and when you put the matte medium on it, you shouldn't have any problem with it wrinkling because it's got this backing. So that's not too bad. Um, now, what will happen if I tear it? Because I like to use torn pieces. So let's tear and see. No problem. Tears very nicely. I could, you know, take a ink applicator and go over that tear mark if I want that distressed look or if I'm using it in collage pieces. So I would say this works but you got to be patient. So you'd probably want to do a lot of them at once. Now, this made me think, what will happen if I use this technique, but instead of using plastic wrap, I use freezer paper? Because freezer paper has two sides. One side is coated in plastic. The other side is just the paper backing. So I'm thinking, instead of putting it on cardstock, use this as the actual backing, but heating this up um, and I'm wondering should I do it face down if I put it on the napkin face down yeah and do it that way okay let's try it okay I've prepared another napkin I've uh, pulled the plies the layers off of it so I just have the one layer and I've got a piece of freezer paper here. So I think the best thing to do would be to put the good side of the napkin face down on my pressing paper here and put the glossy side of the freezer paper face down on top of that and then do the iron. Now, I'm not sure how much heat or how long I have to do this with the freezer, freezer paper. Again, now with this, I'm not getting any wrinkles either, so that's a good thing. that have a second or two to cool. Ooh, it's still very hot. Oh, you want to know something? <laughs> I have a feeling that I have sort of bonded this with my paper. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. No, we're okay. That's on there. That's on there really good. So let's trim this down. So I just very quickly got out a uh, blank card and glued this with a glue stick 
to the front of my card. I do notice that it's wrinkling up a little bit and it might be because of the glue stick. Glue stick doesn't really... Hmm, no, I'm finding it. Glue stick doesn't work very well on this. Might be the backing that's on the freezer paper. So probably double-sided tape might work better, but I did this really quick just to show you. But uh, there you go. Now I could have added a little white panel in behind that to give it a little bit more definition. Yeah, it's curling up here on the edge, so it's the glue stick though, I think, uh, with that. But I think with the freezer paper, it works really well. It also makes it a little less bulky than putting it on the cardstock, and it seems to take quicker with that. And it almost feels like material on here as well. Um, now, this is a little piece of it that I cut off when I was trimming this, so I'm just wondering about tearing. Like if you want to use it in your art journal. Yep, no problem. Tears very nicely. And that's sort of a paper backing to it, so shouldn't be any problem adhering it with something like matte media and adding a little color on it as well. So, yeah. So, my opinion on this process, well, I like putting it on the freezer paper. I think that works uh, better than using the plastic wrap. But you saw the plastic wrap once you, you know, do the things that I suggest that you do so it sticks. That will work as well, too. So, there you go. Now you can take your fancy napkins and you can make them into fancy cards. Okay, so this was number one in my series. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is another technique. So, stay tuned for that.